Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. In this week's tips and tricks video, we're going to learn how to dynamically drive a joint chain by using both a hair curve and an IK spline tool. So what you see in this scene here is I've got what appears to be a bit of a curtain modeled, or you know, some sort of sheet, and then I've got a bunch of joints that are evenly spaced throughout, and then I've got this controller up here that is actually just kind of through a set driven key setup is actually controlling the distance of these these joints together, this parent joint, how far it's kind of translating back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by hiding this mesh and I'm going to go ahead and create a curve using the EP curve tool and then by holding V I'm just going to go ahead and snap it to every single joint here and press enter. From here what we need to do is we actually need to tell this curve that we just created to be a dynamic curve. Now I've gone ahead and put these joints on a layer just to kind of make it easy so I can toggle them on and off. So right now all we've got is our curve left right here and I'm going to go under the module rollout and I'm going to make sure I select dynamics and then under the hair menu I'm going to pick make selected curve dynamic. And what that's going to do is that's going to duplicate the curve and create all the necessary nodes in the background to make that a dynamic hair curve. So if we go into the outliner right now, what we'll see is we have these groups called the hair system follicle and the hair system output curve. Now the output curve is basically the curve that is now the hair curve. And then under the follicle was the original curve that we had selected. So to kind of avoid confusion since this curve has been duplicated, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and hide uh, curve 1 here because that's the actual curve we're not going to want to edit. So I'm going to hit Control H to hide that. And what you'll see when we zoom in is that we actually have a curve here now that is a lighter blue color than the curve we had uh, initially, which was the curve that we used to create this. So from here, the first thing we're going to do is go to the Attribute Editor. And we're going to make sure that this is set to bind just at the base. So you see this option here called point lock. And right now what's happening is it's basically constrained at both the start and the end of the curve. Now in order to get this kind of curtain effect that we want, we obviously only want it to be bound at the top where the curtain is kind of constrained. We want everything else at the bottom to kind of flow evenly. So I'm just going to go ahead and say to point lock only at the base. And then what we can do from here is I can go ahead and unhide my joints and I'm gonna to go to the animation tab and I'm gonna double click this IK spline handle tool now by default what we've got is we've got a bunch of settings on here that are usually like root on curve auto parent curve auto create curve but for this example what we're gonna to want to do is actually uncheck all of these and make sure that snap curve to root is the only one that's selected so from here what we can do is I can close this down and I'm going to go ahead and select the base joint where we started creating this curve. Then go down to the bottom here and select the last joint in the chain and then select this blue curve. And what you'll see we have now is we've got this IK handle and the actual hair curve will be driving it. But in order to do that properly there's one more thing that we have to do and that's actually tell this follicle system here over in the outliner to be a child of the parent joint that sits above the basically the base joint where the IK spline started. So with this hair systems follicle selected in the outliner, if we go ahead and check which joint chain it is, actually it's this joint 12 right here, if we just select this and middle mouse drag it up to joint 12, that's going to make it a child of that joint, and then we should be good. So from here what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to begin to test the actual dynamic setup of this curve. So when you select the curve here and go into the attribute editor, under the hair system shape, you'll see that there are a bunch of properties in here that are going to determine exactly, let's say, the stiffness of this, this hair, or you can actually determine the stiffness of this throughout the actual length of the hair if you want, let's say, it to be stiffer at the base, but really flexible kind of at the tip. You can kind of begin to set up this curve here, which is going to change how stiff it is over the uh, the length of it. And then again, a bunch of other properties down here, like the, you know, the mass, the gravity that's pulling on the actual hair itself. So you're going to begin to want to tweak that but you're not going to really know what to tweak it to unless you actually see what this hair looks like. So what you're going to need to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this outliner down. And what I'm going to do is go to my options here. 
I want to make sure my playback speed is set at every frame. And then under solvers, I'm going to go to interactive playback. And what that's going to do is that's going to basically allow me to kind of control this joint chain using the actual settings that I have over here in the attribute editor. So as you can see, when I move this now, with the set driven keys and all these joints kind of moving, you'll see this one at the very end just kind of swings. And it's also important to note that I've kind of extended my, my frame length up to about a thousand frames or even more if you're going to kind of test back and forth because if it only, it's only set at 30 frames and it's going to kind of end abruptly. So, so it looks like that I do have a bit of a, a dynamic sway going, but it seems to be pretty stiff throughout. So I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor back. And then I'm going to open my outliner again so I can select that curve easily. Go into my attribute editor. And then let's say, let's say I want to adjust the overall stiffness just a bit, maybe increase it just a bit. But what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to maybe going to put in a few separate little indicators to say like over, over time how I want the stiffness of the curve to change. So let's say at the very end of the curve, I want it to be maybe 0.2. And maybe about 75% of the way through, I can do my position right here, 0.75. Let's say I want that value to be about 0.75. So it'll be fairly stiff throughout. And then as it goes to the tip down here, it's going to actually get pretty relaxed. And then maybe maybe I'll up my gravity a bit. Let's say, let's just pick a value like 5. And then if I go back to my interactive solvers or my interactive playback, I can kind of begin to scrub and see how this is going to look. And, you know, maybe that looks okay, uh, but we can't really tell. Let me go ahead and unhide my geometry here. And then I'm going to go ahead and hide my joints so I can kind of focus this on a bit better. And then also turn off my IK handles as well. So, again, going back to my solvers, interactive playback. And then what you can see is now I've got kind of this, almost this effect that you would assume you would see from a curtain that is kind of being open and closed at the very end here. So the only thing we need to do now is go ahead and repeat this for the remaining joints. And I've actually gone ahead and done that. So I'm just going to open that scene right now and we can kind of see what it looks like with all of these settings on that curve and basically IK splines set up on all those curves. Okay, so here we are. I've got all of these joints set up here in the scene. And if we watch the interactive playback now, what we'll see is a much more believable curtain effect. Now I've gone through and kind of edited the gravity of these curves a little bit and I believe what I did is if I go into the outliner here real quick what you'll see is if I kind of go through I'll be able to walk through these curves so let's say curve 9 at the very end I set the gravity to be kind of a very light value uh, just at 1 which is the default and then as I kind of walk through these, I think I just upped the gravity by two to, to make the, the actual curve itself feel a bit heavier. Now, if I were to have all these at a consistent value, then they would all kind of feel the same. Um, and I adjusted that a bit, so we get almost a little bit more of an off, offset and overlap at the, basically the curve at the end that was controlling this curtain. And a little more kind of tightness where a lot of the, the weight was kind of crunched up back here. And it didn't really kind of gain a lot of momentum to continue swinging through. So as you'll see, there's a bit more at the end. And a bit more overlap. So that's pretty much it. That is setting up your joints to be driven by a hair dynamic curve. Now, this technique isn't necessarily limited to cloth situations like this. You can use it for cables, ropes, maybe tails or some things that are hanging off a character if you want something to kind of dynamically swing as the character is being animated. Um, yeah, I, I would suppose just kind of keep your mind open and look for opportunities to use this because you can get some really cool kind of fun dynamic effects that are just kind of added automatically once this setup's already in place. So, all right. Well, thanks again for watching 3dmotive.com.